Hello everyone, my name is Asisi Pombengileli and welcome to my YouTube channel. In today's video guys, we'll be answering this mitosis question from a previous grade 10 life sciences question paper. So the diagram below shows one of the phases of mitosis. Remember guys, mitosis is a cell division process. It's a cell division process whereby one cell divides to form two cells and these two cells are going to be genetically identical to each other and also to the parent cell. So this is one cell dividing to form two genetically identical cells. The chromosome number will be the same. So if, for example, the parent cell has four chromosomes, that means um, each daughter cell will also have four chromosomes. All right. So we are given a diagram um, which is showing one of the phases of mitosis and they are not telling us which phase it is. So identify part A. There is part A that is very simple. These are our spindle fibers or you can say spindle threads. So very simple. That's your spindle fiber or you can say spindle thread it's the same thing okay then identify part b so here part b is pointing at this point over here that is joining the chromatids so joining the chromatids is obviously the centromere so part b is the centromere right let us go to the next question give one visible reason visible meaning what you can see from the diagram to show that the phase above is metaphase so from the diagram that you are given what is it that you can see that shows you that this phase in the diagram is metaphase so that's easy um guys because we can see that the chromosomes are in the middle of the equator and that's basically what happens in metaphase remember you have the interface that takes place first then you will have the prophase then you'll have metaphase then you'll have anaphase then you will have telophase metaphase metaphase is what we are having here and m for middle we are finding our chromosomes in the middle of the equator okay so chromosomes are arranged in the middle middle of the equator okay and remember it's chromosomes and not chromatids so they are arranged uh, in the middle of the equator chromosomes and not chromatids okay then three two three how many chromosomes will be found in each cell at the end of the cell division now how many chromosomes are we going to find in each cell at the end of cell division so this takes us back to what i was explaining over here but now let's start over now what we are seeing is that in the metaphase there is four chromosomes so that basically tells us that the parent cell had four chromosomes right the parent cell had four chromosomes now since we are going to have two cells at the end of the process that means each cell is going to also have four chromosomes because the chromosome number is maintained in mitosis so that means each cell is going to have four chromosomes it's easy peasy because we are having how many chromosomes here in our diagram there's four if you were given another example and let's say there were eight chromosomes so if a parent cell contains eight chromosomes that means each cell at the end of the process will also contain eight chromosomes same with mitosis that takes place guys in our in our in our cell sorry i almost said in our chromosomes <laughs> mitosis that takes place in our cell so for us human beings each cell consists of 46 chromosomes so that means when a cell 
in our bodies undergoes mitosis. This cell that contains 46 chromosome zones, it will undergo mitosis to form two cells. Each of those two cells will also contain 46 chromosome. The chromosome number is maintained. I hope that makes sense. All right. Then three, two, four. Draw the diagram. Now we need to draw a diagram to represent the phase that occurs after the one shown above. Now, this is four marks, and we need to be able to get four marks here. So they are asking us to draw a diagram of the phase that occurs after the one that is shown above. The phase that occurs after metaphase, remember this one is metaphase. So the phase that occurs after metaphase, if we were to come back here, it's actually anaphase. So in this question, they are asking us to draw a diagram representing anaphase. Now, what is important to note is that obviously the centromere is going to split and the chromatids are going to be pulled to opposite poles. So what will then happen here is that you need to make sure that you use the chromosome number that you are given. So in our metaphase diagram, we're having four chromosomes. We are having four chromosomes. So for the next phase, what is then going to take place is that from these chromosomes, the centromere, which is basically um, combining the chromatids, is going to split. And then each chromatid is going to be pulled to an opposite pole. So this chromosome, uh, chromatid will be pulled um, downwards and this chromatid will be pulled upwards. And when you draw the chromatids being pulled to opposite pole, you need to draw them in more like a V-shape kind of a structure to show that they are being pulled to opposite poles. Let me show you. So first things first is for us to write um, the caption of the diagram. So obviously, we uh, let me actually change this color. Uh, okay, we are going to be drawing um, the diagram for anaphase. So we need to indicate that the diagram is going to be um, the anaphase diagram. Then we start by drawing the cell membrane. Let's see if they have, yeah, so there's a cell membrane. Remember, you won't have... A nuclear membrane in this case all right guys so we need to obviously start by writing the caption the diagram that we are going to draw below is the anaphase diagram so you need to indicate and remember guys you get a mark for writing down your caption whether you're drawing a diagram or a table or a graph whatever that you are asked to draw please make sure that you include your caption you get one mark for it then we draw our cell membrane. Mine won't come out perfect, guys, because I'm not using a normal pen. So that will be the cell membrane. Then I'll indicate our centriole. Then I'll draw my spindle fibers. I will draw four spindle fibers. Um, I must actually, let's see, let me start over here. I will draw four spindle fibers. And the reason I'm drawing four spindle fibers because we'll be having four chromatids um, that are pulled to opposite poles. Four on one side, four pulled upwards, and four pulled downwards. Hey, but I'm sure you can see what's happening, guys. This pen is not allowing me to draw nicely pulled um chromatids but there you go i'm trying my best i'm not sure why they're coming out like their hearts and stuff like that oh my god okay but you can see guys and make sure that when you draw your inner face diagram there is a space in between here to show that the chromatids are pulled to opposite poles to show that the chromatids are pulled to opposite poles then we need to label guys obviously this will be the cell membrane so membrane you follow all drawing and labeling rules you draw using your pencil you label using your pen there's a caption you do not shade um, your diagrams your lines please make sure that you use a ruler when drawing your lines uh, your lines must never touch each other 
must never cross each other, they must always be parallel to each other, and preferably label your diagram on the right side, right hand side. So draw your diagram more to the left side of your page so that you have space to put your labels on the right side of the diagram. Um, I'm sure I'm forgetting others, but your, your labeling lines must not have arrows at the end. So it must not have an arrow at the end. And at the beginning of the structure where you're drawing your, the structure that you're labeling, when you're drawing your label line, it must not have a big dot. There's no need for that. So you follow exactly what I'm doing with my label lines. Then I can also label the spindle fibers. I'm not using a ruler because I do not have a ruler, but you are Elena, you have a ruler, you use a ruler. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Then you label the chromatid. Remember, now it's a chromatid and not a chromosome. Then we can also label the centriole. All right. Let me show you how we mark this, guys. For four marks, the first mark will be for the caption. So CPNL can be the code here. C P N L C for the caption. If your caption is correct, you get a mark. P, you've drawn the correct face. We can see that this face is indicating the drawing rather is indicating another face. You get a mark. N, the correct number of chromosomes or chromatids. So remember in our metaphase, we had four chromosomes. So that means here we're going to basically have four chromatids pulled to each side of the pole. So four going up and four going down. Then if that is correct, you get a mark. Then for this particular diagram, they are only giving you one mark for the label. In other diagrams, guys, you can get two marks for the label. So it depends on how they've allocated the mark. Okay, all the best.